On today's episode of the Infinite Loop Show, Tim Cook meets with all things D. iPhone 5, iOS 6, new MacBook Pros. Wannabe MacBook Pros. And... Rush! It's Rush Wednesday! <sighs> yeah, that happened. All that and more on the Infinite Loop Show. Hello again, true believers. It is I, Casey Coughlin, and <laughs> Michael Gaines, with another fantabulous <laughs> episode of the Infinite Loop Show. True believers, I really like that. Oh yeah. Yes, and it is Rush Wednesday. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> what 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 what's that? I don't know. Like, I guess I'm not at all a Rush fan, uh. and. So that okay. kind of plays into it, but it, the whole idea of people. So I guess this is mainly a Google Plus thing. I yeah, haven't it heard is. This anywhere else. No, it was, it's, it's just, just a goofy thing. Yeah, people on Google Plus just like all of a sudden it's whatever Wednesday, <laughs> whatever Thursday, you know, and it just gets really annoying. But of course, I'm sure the minute they make one that I actually like, I'm going to be like, this is the best thing ever. I think we should have Mac Monday. I like it. It's the best thing it's ever. More alliterative than Rush Wednesday. Oh, you're killing me. You're breaking my heart right here. You can have Weezer Wednesday. <laughs> we have what? What Wednesday? Weezer Wednesday. It's, what is that? They're both W's. Oh, That's Weezer. It. Oh, my God. I remember them. That was like it's a million a, years ago. Oh, yeah. They're totally more relevant than, or not as relevant as Rush. Don't right even now. go there. Don't. So, Don't. When was their last album? Well, their next album comes out in two weeks. Well, the album before that came out about two years ago. They have this really? album. This album will bring them up to the third um, most number of albums for a band behind Led Zeppelin. And, no, it was Led Zeppelin and the Beatles, I think. See, they're, they're like quietly over in the corner, just pumping away. <laughs> That's right. Pumping they're, out albums nobody knows about. They're like the guys in the corner that are just doing their thing, and, and those of us that really know what's going on are appreciating them, and their new album okay. comes out I'm on just, June 12th. You know, I'm so looking like tunnel vision on the Mac blogs. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not paying attention to this one little Rush the music blog world. way over there. <laughs> Rushesaband.com. <laughs> it's yeah. not mine, but it's what I read. <laughs> get the word out quick. All right, let's get on to news that people actually care about on this podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go ahead, you you start. Oh, oh me. Yes, you. So, um, yeah, the uh, All Things D or uh, conference D conference. Mm -hmm. What are they like? What's its official title? I don't even know. Um, I usually call it the All Things D conference, All things but D, then yeah. I think. Uh, CNN was showing it as the D conference, and then there's D10, and so many names, usually with a D in there. So, yeah. um, Kara Swisher and Malt Wa Malt Wasberg, uh, <laughs> Walt Mossberg. Oh, or that guy. <laughs> uh, uh, Malt Matt Wasberg w sounds like an, <laughs> a Ben and Jerry's ice cream flavor. <laughs> I think that's the name of the Muppet that looks like <laughs> Walt Mossberg. It's Could Walt be. Mo <laughs> They're like those old guys that sit up in the balcony yeah, during the Muppet so Show. Can you believe this? They haven't put out iOS 6 yet. Ah. Ah, where are the Mac Pros? Yeah, don't know. Yeah, it would totally be about the Mac Pros. Um. <laughs> So yeah, they uh, they sat down with Tim Cook for the first time. Mm -hmm. Apparently, they I thought it was only been a couple times. They sat down with Steve Jobs six times. Yeah, that's crazy. Six times. The interview was interesting. I didn't I didn't listen to it. I didn't watch it. It happened while I was away from home. So all I really got were the cliff notes on um, on a website. But there were some interesting things about it. Well, it's it's really something that. I should listen to from beginning to end. 
Like a keynote. Like well, like a keynote. But I mean, interviews like this, you can only take away what what's important. But it, I believe that you need to you listen to things like this in context. No, yeah, I was just gonna say, and the context definitely matters with something mm-hmm. like um, interviews more so than keynotes. Right. So just to gloss over a few things, he talks about the difference between him and Steve as CEOs, difference between w- what he's doing in Apple versus what Steve did. Um, things of course, that he, those are going to be the things that, like everyone's on the edge of their seat to hear. Like, <laughs> give us the dirt on Steve. What no. was he like? <laughs> was he running around and cut off jean shorts like <laughs> we think he was? They wouldn't do anything like that at all. Things do they wouldn't. But it would be but funny if they all, did. I mean, the viewers and you know that's the first thing like we as outsiders want to hear is okay now. Like, Steve Jobs was CEO for a long time, and now you're CEO. What's going on? <laughs> I just came What's up, with, up a, with that. I came up with a funny website name that's not taken. Not that I'm going to bite or anything, but I'm not going to just. Of course you are. What is I'll it? tell you about it later. Oh. They're okay. talking about, he talked about uh, doubling down on secrecy of products, which is important. Yeah, I heard that. Uh, mm-hmm. Thing is, is no, 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 I'm not going to go there. Mac Pearl. Mac Pearl. <laughs> talking about the patent wars, he says that it's a pain in the ass. And I, I got to say that I, oh, I can't imagine, surprising. cannot imagine what it must be like working at Apple Legal. Right? Like being on that team, I don't think it's it's not an easy job and it's not a prestigious, awesome job either. Maybe internally like, it is. No, like I wouldn't even bet that. Um, I bet... Like, their design and engineering department internally is probably held up higher than legal is probably down with, like, accounting or something. No. And even if I were a lawyer, like, you would probably get more prestige and more, I guess, satisfaction even so much out of your job by being, like, with a separate legal firm mm-hmm. than I think you would as being a in-house uh, lawyer for somebody like Apple. True. I, I see it differently. I see it as you go to the lawyers when you're about to sue somebody. And mm-hmm. and they're the people that make absolutely sure that, that you have a, a solid legal footing to stand on. Oh, no. I'm and, not saying that they don't play a role that's important. Yeah. Obviously, they do. And Apple's in court so much. I'm sure they have a hefty legal team in-house that's all their own. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I just don't see it as being I I bet I would be willing to bet that they probably don't get paid their due as they should. They're the unsung heroes. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. He talked a little bit about possible Facebook and Twitter integration into future products. Mm, maybe iOS six. Oh yeah. That um that might happen. I think uh, the iOS six Thing was was more about Facebook than Twitter because Twitter's already integrated into iOS five. Um, talked a little bit about Siri, how they can improve there. But again, it's it's an interview that I really need to listen to beginning to end before I can make any serious comments on it. Because maybe reading we Cliff Notes can is a listen and and or watch in a upcoming hangout, oh, possibly after the show, if we have time. Uh, because we'll do a short after party. Yeah, but Hang we're not out. opening it to the public this time. <laughs> we'll do it to our extended circles. Extended circles, because I'm not dealing with, with that crap anymore. <laughs> so, kids, if you follow Infinite Loop Show on Google+, Plus, yep. we'll let hangout you know. to wait. <laughs> <laughs> there are some iPhone 5 back case pictures. Yes, there are. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I, I like. Oh, here you read the title that you put underneath it because this is your joke, and I'm not taking it away from you. Go ahead. So these cases, it's looking like they're thinner, longer, <laughs> and uncut. Yeah. See, I didn't think that way. <laughs> uh, well, the first two are true. Yeah. The second, obviously, they're cut from the mold. Well, <laughs> they're very cut. Yeah, so. that's true. They, uh, they're they supposed to have a 4-inch diagonal screen. We knew that. True 16 by 9 we knew that. The new thing that came out this week is the fact that it has a smaller dock connector. Now, Say it ain't so! Well, I'm, I'm interested to be... As, as uh, somebody who's curious about technology, I never really took a 
a good look into the 30 pin connector to see mm-hmm. what the pins represent. You know, obviously you're going to have data and power and such like like that, but there are some peripherals that you can add there. I don't know what all 30 pins represent. So for a smaller connector, is it a 30 pin connector? A smaller think- 30 pin connector? Or is it maybe they took out some redundant pins? I think, okay, so the 30-pin connector, as we know it, carries data and power, like you said. Right. That data component is both video and audio right. and actual data streaming. So, I mean, that's that's huge. That's, um, that's kind of like Thunderbolt mm-hmm. is, you know, where it's carrying all of that through one port. So it's pretty hefty. It does a good job, and it's done a good job for a number of years. Mm-hmm. And Apple actually has a patent on this. Every third-party accessory manufacturer that uses the 30-pin connector um, from like the BMWs down to the crappy little <laughs> um, I Love speakers, they have to actually license the right to use that right. connector. They pay Apple money. Mm-hmm. Um, so... To change up this port is, A, a huge disruption in accessories and cases and everything. Mm -hmm. So they have to have a good reason to do so. But also, um, we don't know if they have, I mean, I'd assume they would, but we don't know if they have a a patent on this next one. So does that also disrupt licensing, you know, and stuff like that? I don't know. I'd assume if it's a smaller, so if it's a smaller 30 pin, if it's just like the same 30 pin, the same... Everything they just kind of were able to finally condense it down to a nice sleeker form factor. Mm-hmm. Then I'd guess they probably have the same patents, licensing. Everybody goes home happy, except you know everybody has to build new molds and buy new yeah speaker dock things. Or um, or unless there's a con- um, uh, an adapter, or build an adapter. That's probably going to happen as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of people were saying, what if this is just going to be a uh, mini USB or mini HDMI like a lot of the droids have? Mm-hmm. Um, actually, if you get a Mophie case, what you use to charge that case to the wall or your computer is a mini uh, USB. Right, right. So a lot of the people are saying, why why not just go with that? It's an open standard. Um it's out there. A lot of accessories already use this. A lot of droids already use this. The mm-hmm. movie case already uses it. Um, problem is that, you know, obviously, I mean, it's not really a problem, but from Apple's perspective, that's an open standard. Mm-hmm. So then there's no licensing. They're not getting royalties off that. Um, also, the USB really only carries power and some data depending on how it's attached to the processor. Um, so we're kind of losing out for video and audio too. Mm -hmm. So streaming, uh, to, you know, anything directly is going to be mitigated. A lot of those, I think, um, instrument connectors, um, that use like GarageBand and whatnot on the iPhone. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at a 30 pin, um, image, uh, right now, the pinouts, Mm-hmm. Ground USB accessory mm-hmm. V bus. I guess that's video. I don't know. I, yeah, V bus one and two. V out charger NC eleven and twelve not connected. Oh. Accessory ID USB ID accessory int ground um, ear right cradle ear left cradle. Two more that are not connected. Twenty five and twenty six. Remote sense. Um, APTV hmm. out, um, IF, I don't know what that would be, IF. Infra... No, I don't know, I was thinking, my, my first thought was infra- infrared, <laughs> but there's a, there's an IF, TXD, RXD, MHL. They, it sounds like they just got a ton of stuff in there, unless they're actually using all that to date. Maybe they put a ton of stuff in there that they thought they would use in the future. Yeah, and- I, w- or something. Yeah, um, I'm trying to find one that's got a. Um, oh, here's one. Here's a website that's got them all. All right, ground. Oh, line in. Okay, right, line in, line out, r- right and left. Mm-hmm. Uh, video out. S. Oh, that's it. Okay, S. Video um, in and out. Oh, it's all like the older, deprecated. Yeah. 
video format. Zero ground, one. iPod sensing line, transmit and receive, um, mm. power, 3.3 volt, firewire power, 12 volts DC. So a lot of these, they're probably just taking out altogether, and so then they can condense it down to a, a port that's really um, yeah I'm, kind of relevant today and not in 2007. Well, I think that they can get rid of a lot of the firewire stuff. Yeah. Well, I think um, the S video too. I mean, seriously. Maybe S video. I don't know. There's still some people that that use them for like smaller monitors. Um, okay, if they can move people off of FireWire, yeah. and you know, physical media, um, you can move off of S video now, people. It's okay. <laughs> you can take that step into the great unknown that is like. VGA and DVI, VGA. maybe. I mean, you can you can move forward. You can do it. The headphone jack is on the bottom, and you have in in caps bottom. How can this be? Um, so a lot. Yeah, I mean, I at first I think it, this is one of those things where at first you're just like Weird. the headphones on the bottom. What are they thinking? <laughs> like an iPod. I like like an iPod Touch a shuffle. Uh, um. But really, it, it if you think about it, I guess it kind of makes sense. So that, what is it really, if you're listening to your phone in your pocket, what does it really matter what angle it, it's, it's in? I'll, I'll give you two good reasons why. If you're, here, I'll turn this on. So, um, well, all right. So if, if your iPhone is on and you have it on your mm -hmm. table and you want to look at your phone right side up mm -hmm. you could you can st stick the iphone uh, the um, headphone connector in the top and drape it around yeah sure you could do that but you can plug it into the bottom because what is it giving you if you plug it into the if into the top i like how really you're like you sure you could do that you could do it and like drape an it but idiot. You could, but no i'm just saying that you can just <laughs> drape and plug it into the bottom but there's another reason why at the gym if you have it on an armband then what yes. you can do is you can have it plugged in through the bottom, and then you don't have to do the drape of the of the um, headphone wire around the top. But that's so. that's such a I don't think the Johnny Ive is is in there going. People at the gym <laughs> demand this. No, um, no. I I think it's it's probably primarily for aesthetics. If you're looking at uh -oh. like your phone and say you know it's charging or something you've got a wire coming out of one end and a wire coming out of the other end mm -hmm. and so it's kind of just like on this big bulb thing on a continuous wire mm -hmm. um whereas if if everything was coming out of the bottom then i don't know aesthetically maybe it's more pleasing but i guess if maybe. you have it in a dock then it's much harder maybe difficult to impossible to be having the headphones in at the same time if it's in a dock. If it's in a dock, right? Because un unless you have a dock that's got a headphone connector, then that's true. That's true. You, that would be through. one way to kind of pass it Do through. It. All right. Um, what, what else is is on this thing that we that we have? So also the um, the whole backing. Um, a lot of these sites, nine to five Mac, um, iLounge has leaked photos, I am assuming from Apple suppliers, mm -hmm. of these new back cases. And this is where all these rumors are coming from about the port and uh, uh, location and everything of that. Um, whereas the whole back is actually metallic mm -hmm. instead of glass this time. So were those early <laughs> rumors about I... Uh, about what was it liquid metal it's, correct yeah i think so metal? you know i i don't know what the uh, the rate of destruction is on these iphones but i do know that some people were complaining that their backs were were shattering if they a lot them. of uh, yeah i think i mean i'm not one of them i i no. haven't broken a 4 or a 4s mm -hmm. yet oddly enough i've shattered the two and the three uh, tons mm -hmm. but i haven't broken these two which are more breakable i'd assume but i think 
yeah, those that have broken them have been very vocal about it. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you ever make it glass on the front and the back? That's so dumb. Yeah. I'm going to drop it constantly. Hello. Um, but with the supposed liquid metal back, then it's obviously going to be more durable. It's not glass. It's metal. And this liquid metal is supposed to be supposed to be more durable and much more lighter weight. Mm -hmm. uh, they also, the other thing they're saying with a metal back, kind of like the two had, where it uh, they might have a built-in antenna where built into the entire back plate as opposed to just kind of around the edges. Mm -hmm. So that'll be an interesting change, and I don't know if it's going to... Well, for one thing, it's going to keep at least one part of it from shattering. There's nothing you can do about the front. Yeah. It has to be glass. No, because we haven't invented transparent aluminum yet. Not yet. So, not yet, Scotty. Get on that. Uh, we've got Gorilla Glass <laughs> 2 on the front, repositioned FaceTime camera, which in the pictures that we've seen, if, if they're true, it's going to be above the earpiece, directly, like directly centered above. Like directly where the light sensor is on the earpiece. Mm -hmm. It looks like the FaceTime camera will be right there. Yep. Which, whoa. <laughs> now, what's this... This last one you added. Um, so there was some other rumors about this last little thing. Because obviously all these sites are just tearing apart these photos of the uh, supposed iPhone 5 backplate. Mm -hmm. And right between where you have the camera and the flash on the back, there's another teeny tiny little port or mic or hole of some sort and everybody of course is speculating what is that what's mm -hmm. going on there what is, it? is it something <clears throat> on the picture um some people were saying that it might be a mic yeah. for recording video for noise cancellation i think that's probably the most plausible but i don't know I don't know. I don't know what it could be. Uh, we're going to have to see. It's it's more than likely not going to be an SD card slot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which everybody keeps bitching about. I don't want the SD card yeah, slot. What, what, what do you need old... that for? No. You know, I've had this phone for years. An iPhone for years. And I've had phones that you use an SD card on. I, just just buy one with like a lot of memory and be done with it. I, yeah, I, I, don't... I don't see um, any drawback and likewise no real benefit to either having a ton of built-in memory or having like a big sd card mm -hmm. like i guess there would be a benefit in if i was poor i could just put in a four and then when i strike it rich i can put in a 16 gig sd card yeah it, i mean the iphone comes with 16 gigs minimum and then goes up to 64 do you need more than that in a phone <laughs> well i you know what happened to me today I was at a, a talent show and my daughter played guitar and I was recording the whole thing and three quarters of the way through my iPhone says, Up oh, you're running out of, of space. Maybe you should get off all those rush albums. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching everybody. <laughs> no, um no what happened was I, I had a lot of apps that took up a lot of space and I never deleted them or they just or I never told iTunes to not sync them and they wound up syncing mm -hmm. after the whole thing was over I wound up getting a lot of it I got four and a half minutes out of six minutes so it's not that big of a deal oh. all right but I wound up and during intermission I deleted a bunch of apps like apps I, like I, I looked at them and I went no I really don't ever want to play these again <laughs> yeah. 1.2 gigabytes I deleted wow. yeah That's a lot. And I have 3,000 pictures because I I just never got around to deleting them off my phone because ever since the iPhone 1, 2, 3G, oh, yeah. or the 3, when uh, 3GS. When I got the 4S and my camera and photo stream just took a major crap, mm -hmm. I had over 4,000 pictures. Yeah. So it's time for me to actually, well, I mean, I back up my pictures all the time. They're backed up on my computer, but I need to go through my pictures on my phone and really delete some of the, the crap yeah. I'm never going to look at again. Or just, you know, go into iTunes and kind of just uh, sync via, in the categories or just faces or, you know, manage it 
Mm-hmm. That way, kind of like you can manage your playlists with music. I do that. And what I do now is I don't sync any albums and I only pull them down when I need them mm-hmm. off of iCloud uh, with, with iTunes Match. So that's what I do now. Uh, and then when I see the problem with that, though, is that when I when I'm running out of space, like in this instance, then yeah. I have to go through and remember or which one did I did I pull down? I have to get rid of it and I have to remember yeah. which ones I pulled down. I was like, oh, do I really want this Queen album right now? Well, like, which is more important? I can always pull it yes. down again later. Yeah. <laughs> I posted this for Casey because she loves this stuff. There are these uh, renderings. They're not official. Somebody went and created these renderings of the new Retina MacBook Pros. And they're really pretty. Yeah, Casey had to like wipe the drool off of her mouth. <laughs> they're, they're not really anything that we didn't I know like, was coming, though. I like comps, and I like, yeah, the the fictitious, when people make, you know, prototype comps in yeah. uh, Maya or Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever, and they just they look so slick and awesome. And, of course, most of these just never even come close to fruition, mm-hmm. but... I like looking at pretty things. <laughs> but speaking of ripoffs. Oh my gosh. Okay. You found this today. So, um, I have to give credit. Um, our Unix guy at work found this oh, okay. for me and then shared it. Um, the new Dell Precision Workstation. Oh, how you wish you were a Mac Pro. <laughs> It's like the Dell that goes, I think I can, I think I can. No. It no, and I love it. Um so YouTube, if you search for I I'm not sure because uh, it's like Dell Precision T one thousand or some crap. Well what's the um, title? Here I'm bringing it up right now. Dell Precision T seventy six hundred workstation overview. Oh, can you hear this? Okay, I'm gonna yeah. pause that because I didn't really mean it's, for it to play. Um they have like this well developed promo video for it like apple does with johnny ive talking about the process and why they did what they did with um one i guess an engineer or possibly a marketing dude i don't know um talking about the dell workstation and how they've completely overhauled and and reworked to their design from bottom you know top to bottom and literally every little spec is exactly like the mac pro Mm -hmm. And everything they've they've worked really hard on and developed on their own and come to a decision that was the most functional and like, oh, they got all this input from users and this is what the users want. So we're giving you what you want. Aren't we great? Sure you are <laughs> because you just totally copied the Mac Pro, which I can't really fault them for because the Mac Pro is the best, most beautiful, most functional desktop You're killing design. Me. You're killing me. Ever. Killing me. You know why you're killing me? Because you have an old ass, stank ass Mac Pro that needs to be upgraded. Well, let me let me jump around our, our list a little bit. There is a Mac Pro petition. Yes, on there Facebook, is. it's called it, it's facebook.com slash Mac pros, please. Pros please. is plural. And it's got what? Four, was it 14? Wait, it was, I forgot if it was 1400 or 14,847 14, likes on Facebook. <laughs> Which is a lot, but really kind of small potatoes if you're trying to get, I think, Apple's attention. Well, I don't know because for every person that likes it, First okay, off, they yeah. had to find it. They, yes. they had to know about it. So the people that know about it are probably people but that... It's gaining, it's gaining steam because all these blogs are picking it up. And even MacBreak Weekly this week mentioned it. Mm-hmm. So it probably gained a whole bunch there. But even if all these people who like this page, if Apple puts out a new MacBook Pro, say all those people put go out and buy one right away, buy a new Mac Pro... That's it's only fourteen thousand eight hundred and forty seven. Right. That's small potatoes compared to iPhone and iPad sales. That's true. But I look at it this way, is that for every person that likes it, there are probably a hundred that don't even know that this existed. Or maybe okay. ten. Even if you, even if it's ten. And that's a hundred and forty thousand. Now, is it worth all the engineering effort to to make one? See, 
I don't know what it takes to make one. How much effort does it take to put in a brand new processor and upgrade the motherboard? Right. They don't even have to redesign the case or anything. No. It's literally just the innards and throw on a goddamn Thunderbolt. Yeah. That's all you can do. Well, yeah. Or see, two or three. I, three Thunderbolts and that's it. <laughs> I don't know what it takes to design a motherboard. I really don't. I mean, I took a class in college, but it was just I crap. think I think you just need a green board and then some soldering. <laughs> Um, that's it that's what it is and then you just solder some stuff on it (laughs) and you make pretty designs but i i these guys are are smart it can't be that much different than designing an imac motherboard in the in the sense that you know you've got your thunderbolt connectors you've got your usb connectors you've got your sata connectors and then all you really have to do is just make whatever changes you need for the uh the new processor yeah so once you have the motherboard out of the way and you can you can mill whatever you need to for the Thunderbolt ports, everything else just just keep it the same. Yeah. You've got you've got the SATA drive bays, you've got yeah. the RAM bay, you've got yeah. the two bays here on, on the on the front for uh, for your DVD yes. or hopefully Blu-ray drive. So w- how hard could it be to do this? Maybe and- maybe it's really hard. And that's why they haven't done it. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's too hard for Apple to to engineer. I'm they're just, just <laughs> they're just not smart enough at Apple. I'm just saying that I I really think that um, Apple needs to to open up to people to professionals like you and me that yeah. that are relying on this because my, I, about a year ago I thought ah this computer's fine it's it's working okay. I'm telling you, it's it's starting to show its age, and I need a new computer yesterday. Yeah, it's starting to need those blue pills to perform, and it's just really kind of sad. So we hope that this this gains some traction. Um, this this Facebook page, and I hope that Tim Cook at least acknowledges the fact that there are new MacBook Pro, uh, new Mac Pros coming soon. Even if you say they're coming. That's fine. That's that's all I'll care yeah. about. Mm-hmm. I'll wait six months for a new one. That's fine. This this thing can hold out. I can do my yeah, podcast and my work. Yeah, the fact that there's like literally no word but, whatsoever. But the fact that Mountain Lion won't work on it, that's huge. And people yeah. are not going to buy a 2010 computer as a brand new one when there's Thunderbolt out. Yeah, And I know. i7 and Ivy Bridge. And-, and really, if they're trying to push that um, the Thunderbolt spec, I mean, what better way? I mean, who's using Thunderbolt the most? I would think professionals. professionals. So, yeah, there you go. Just do it. Do a new Mac Pro and put like at least two, if not four, Thunderbolt ports on there. Yes, please. They're little. What? What? <laughs> They're little. They're little. Please do it. Um. So Apple's likely to use NAND storage in the upcoming Mac Pros. Yeah. Apparently. And what does this mean? Now, here's what I I think about that. Hmm. I have been doing some reading on SSD drives. And when they were first released years ago, the big concern is whether or not they were going to last. Okay. Well, we found out now that they do last for many years. Mm -hmm. So we've gotten past that. The problem, the next problem is cost versus storage. Mm -hmm. And these things still... They're about what did we look at last time? It's like a dollar a gigabyte. Um, they're about at that sweet spot right now. Yeah, for SSDs. So they're a dollar a gigabyte, which is where hard drives were. What six years ago, seven years ago, something like that. And so they haven't gotten to the point yet where, like, okay, maybe I'll put one in my MacBook Pro, but I'm not replacing the two point five terabyte drive that I've got in my Mac Pro. And, yeah. and that's just one of them. I've got three other drives in here. So mm-hmm. there's not a lot of stuff. I, I use it like I store old trail like movie trailers and things like that and all my podcasts and all that stuff and all my projects and my Photoshop stuff. I mean that's what's on my hard drives. So do I need all that space? Maybe it depends on how you look at it because well, if, not in the computer. You could put that on an external, or just take out that drive and put it in the closet. You're put right. A new drive you're right. I suppose you could do that, but there are people out there, professionals, that are probably going to rely on regular hard drives because of the space. 
Drobos. Dr- well, Drobos. Drobos are good. Um, I don't have one. I would love to have one. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But <laughs> um, I just think that people that are professional that are doing HD video mm-hmm. and albums are still going to rely yes. on the, the, the vast storage that you can get from yeah, no, regular I think, hard drives. Well, yeah. Okay, so I think even more so that's where Thunderbolt comes in. Mm-hmm. You In your actual machine, your local drive is an SSD for the speed, for the boot up, for all the, the goodness. And then you have a massive external uh, Thunderbolt drive. Mm-hmm. for your actual storage yeah um because i mean sure you need you need more room but do you need it locally on your machine <sighs> probably not and with you Thunderbolt, may be right. you know you're gonna you're gonna be it's it's not gonna be the fastest but it's gonna be way faster than usb mm-hmm. um i believe it's faster than eSATA. it is and so yeah, I don't know. There you go. I, I mean, it's not going to be as fast as if it's soldered to the board, obviously, but it's going to be really close to it. So I am looking up SSD drive prices right now because I haven't looked up prices in a long time. Okay, so the I've first thing. I've convinced you. My no, no, you haven't done. convinced me, but I'm curious. So, for example, okay, here's a 60 gig SATA drive. I'm not going to say where I'm looking because we don't. We don't have any official sponsors, but Ooh. a 60 gig. Uh, oh, wait, that's uh, hold on. SSD. I'm looking for an SSD. SanDisk. Um, SSD. Here we go. 120 gigabyte SATA 3 SSD is um, $124. So it's still around that $1 per gigabyte price. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to wait a little bit. I'd really like to know why these things are being made. They're being mass produced, probably easier to make than the platter hard drives. I would think so. And yet they're so. still so There's expensive. Less components. No moving parts. Right, I know. You're basically creating a giant RAM disk. Remember RAM disks yeah. from years ago? That's all yeah. this thing really is. It, it is. I agree. I know. And um, I think that these prices are just not indicative of how much... You, I, I'd have to do some research on how much these things actually cost, but I think that the prices are just if they if they drop the price twenty percent, I think more people. You think they're artificial being created by the man? Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, the man's keeping them down. (laughs) The man is keeping them down. The man is keeping them down. That's right. Okay. (laughs) Siri is is going to be able to control your vacuum cleaner. Finally. Well, all right. So tell us about this. What is this? Oh, wait, did I, I add this? Oh, oh, I added this. <laughs> is it Drobo? No, this is, is it... this is an app. Oh called... no, Roomba. Is it Roomba? <laughs> no. I want. I want an iPhone controlled Roomba. Can I have that? <laughs> this is an app called Air Dictate from Avatron. I forgot I had added this. Sometimes I add these things six and a half days ago, and I just completely forget. It's a dollar. It's a one dollar app, and then you can download the Air Dictate receiver software for your Mac, and then over your same Wi-Fi system, you'll be able to talk to Air Dictate, and you can tell um, you can tell your system what to do. The problem is that it only works on the iPhone 4S. Well, okay, so and, it's definitely taking part of. Is it? Taking advantage of the Siri kind of API? So far as I know, there is no Siri API yet. Well, okay. So, but I mean, whatever uh, API calls, like the, not full Siri, but like the new iPad has where it's got dictation, but it's not full Siri. Oh, maybe. That that, yeah, you may be, be right. Um, a newer API that the 4 doesn't have access to. I'm looking it up. But, no, I don't know that. Um, I don't know if it's doing it on, on its own or what. But um, I would I would try this thing out. But it only works on the iPhone 4S and I only have a, a 4. Well, I will just have to do some homework then. You will have to do some homework. What I've been trying to... Uh, Casey and I have been talking about this is that I've been trying to find an open source voice recognition API that will break down things into commands, like English commands. And I can't seem to find one that works well. 
There are some out there. There's Dragon Dictate, for example. There are mm-hmm. some open source ones out there. But I need something so that I can I can tell iTunes to play the Beatles or something like that. And I know there are some people out there that are very gonna important say, things. <laughs> there are some people out there that are going to say, well, derp, you can you can do the whole voice recognition thing built into the Mac." No, it blows. It's yeah, shoddy at best. <laughs> It's definitely not impress your friends and uh, dinner party company quality. No, no. I've had to struggle with this stuff. And the problem that I've had with the built-in voice recognition on the Mac is that you have to make a command, uh, an Apple uh, an Apple command. Oh, for it to recognize that you're thing. talking to it. Yeah, you can't Which, say, I mean, play I think the Beatles. that's actually more natural. Yeah, but Siri will do that. In fact, the, the no, crappy Siri voice recognition... How many people, when they're talking to Siri, say Siri? Da, well, da, 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 da. Okay, you for know, example. even though it's not necessary, a lot of people, I was doing that for a long time. And then I realized, oh, I don't have to say Siri first. I can just freaking talk. Let me, let me try something here. I'm going to do this. Here. We're going to play album moving pictures. Is that the normal voiceover? Yeah. Pre-Siri. Oh, it didn't work. Wait, hold on. Let me try it again. Oh, no. that's surprising. Yeah. Hold on. Play album moving pictures. No match found. No match. It just started playing the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> it just started playing Tom Sawyer. There, here it goes. All right. So now I'm going to have to turn that off. Um, but it does work. But th- what I'm saying, I can't shut this off now. But that unlocking my phone. Hold on, let me unlock the phone. What I'm saying is, I want that to happen on my Mac. And why don't we have yeah. voice recognition on the Mac yet? It's, 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 I have to go to not now playing. There we go. It finally shut off. Oh, you know, I probably could have just double clicked, double tapped the home button. But this is what I want on my Mac. I want to be able to have as good voice recognition as even this crappy stuff on the iPhone four. And the 4S yeah, with Siri be is even better. Good. Why don't we have this? I don't know. Maybe it's really hard to do. It's really hard. <laughs> they need a lot of time. It's really, really difficult. <laughs> um, but hey, it's okay. WWDC is coming up. It is. And do we have a schedule? We do. We have a little app for it. It's crazy. Oh, we do have an app? I didn't even see they that. They released an app with the schedule and events and everything. I love this because more and more conferences and conventions are doing this. Mm-hmm. They're making their own apps. And so it's not just the schedule, you know, the day-to-day of all, like, the panels and events and workshops and all that. But you get, like, maps. You get the whole shebang all in, like, a nice, neat little package. And more and more shows are doing this. So Keynote or uh, WWDC is doing this. And it's fantastic. So here's the, um, I was reading um, Daring Fireball today, mm-hmm. and the um, the problem with the schedule right now is that it has a lot of to be announced stuff. Like John Gruber wrote this oh. whole thing about how there are way too many to be announced sessions than there are normally for WWDC. And, and of course, they do that. They do that intentionally. It's expected because yeah, they right. can't announce new products in the schedule or else they're going to go, look at what's happening. So they do to yeah. be announced. This one seems to have a lot more than normal, which makes me wonder what new stuff. I mean, we're going to probably get some information on iOS 6. We're probably going to get some information about the iPhone 5 maybe. Maybe, but but then you start getting into things like Apple TV. Now, do we have this? I don't. Th- do we have this listed on the? Oh, we do on the bottom. Well, hey, Tim said in the D conference that he was going to double down on uh, secrecy. On, so on secrecy. There you go. But it's what right I'm there, saying is yeah. that, and and this maybe we'll we'll just talk about this rumor that's in our, it's, it's in our rapid fire. But Apple is talking about possibly putting out a new Apple TV OS. Mm-hmm. So that may be something for the developer. It's a developer's conference. Why not put it out exactly. then? Exactly. Exactly. And then what else? I mean, there may be something coming out that, that nobody knows about. That's to be announced? Yes. I'm, not, I'm talking about hardware. So we'll have to You heard to it here first, kids. Something <laughs> yeah, is heard going it here to be first. announced. <laughs> 
Sean Parker wrote that Apple tried to stop Spotify from coming into the U.S. I wrote this because you are a big Spotify user. I am. This is this is really bizarre. Well, I guess it's not that bizarre, but I don't well, know. It's did- not like Spotify is the first subscription you know music service Mm -hmm. there's already like i don't know if they were just trying to like trim the fat where they could and just kind of just if they could just stop one more from becoming a thing but just seems really kind of crazy um the person this is the uh, the article on 9 to 5 mac uh this is written by Jake Smith he said at the bottom of the article that he ditched iTunes completely for Spotify i tried doing that i can't do it I I'm absolutely done. cannot do it. The Spotify player needs work. A lot of work for me to move to it. And I'm fine with it. I think it's great. Uh, I know that my biggest gripe with it, other than the fact that it crashes a lot, is the fact that it still to this day, in today's world, does not play gapless audio. Okay, yeah. Um, I don't know. Like That's not as big a thing for me. Lately, what I've been listening to the most on Spotify are user-created playlists that I subscribe to. And then there's also, now that Spotify has added apps, mm-hmm. there's an app called SoundDrop, which are kind of like pre-made radio stations where people vote up and down stuff and it gets played. So mm-hmm. I listen to that a lot um, on uh, certain channels where you really, I mean, the gapless thing doesn't come into play as much and I've never had the app crash on me, the desktop or the iOS app. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I I try listening to a bunch of albums on Spotify, and and either the app crashes or especially they're they're like pink, you tried listening to a Pink Floyd album on Spotify and it doesn't work. I have not. Yeah, you get like a four second gap when it's supposed to be gapless. Uh, it just really kills the mood of the album. It does. So, not a big fan, not yet. And the weird thing uh, is that that's been that's been listed on their uh, one of their list of things to fix on Get Satisfaction for like two or three years now. Oh, really? Is gapless mm-hmm. playback, and they still won't fix the damn thing. Maybe it's just really hard. It's yeah. really difficult. They need more time. Get off their back. They're doing <laughs> the best they can. Right. Um. Hey, guess hey. what? What? Apparently, iOS is a beautiful crystal prison. And we're all so happy to be in it. <laughs> yeah, so the EFF said that Apple needs to be more open about what they do. And yeah, they make this like huge complainy doctrine about how horrible Apple is for making this walled garden on iOS and it oh my god, OS X is becoming the same way and we have to stop it and it's horrible and ma <laughs> Well here's the, the reason why I added this is because I've always felt that phones, not just the iPhone, but phones need to be controlled a little more than computers because for one thing they're very important to people's lives you, if emergencies mm-hmm. and such you don't want to have a brick when you need a phone and so yeah. i can understand that I, I i said this even years even before the iphone existed i said that is that you shouldn't screw with the phone try to make it as and, and even when i had my nokia n95 i still wouldn't install apps on it because I was afraid it was going to break. So I'm okay with that. The reason I, I added this um, this article to our show list is because of the fact that the EFF is talking about OS X slowly becoming the same thing. I have to agree with that. I don't like the direction that Apple is taking Mac OS X or OS X as they're calling it now. Everybody, yeah. I mean, I think it's pretty clear they're kind of... Either OSifying OS iOSifying OS X mm-hmm. or the two are just becoming closer together. I don't know if like OS X is coming to meet iOS or if they're just kind of both going to a common future. Mm-hmm. The EFF wrote that um, mobile and desktop computer owners should be giving these four rights. Installation of arbitrary applications on the device. No. 
Absolutely yeah. no. I want to install everything. Make me a local admin so I can install all the toolbars <laughs> and all the helpful, you know, coupon apps that make my shit crash. I, <laughs> What's wrong with that? I, it, well, for a phone, I don't like it. For an, for an operating system, I don't have a problem with it. On a desktop computer, I don't have a problem with it. Access to the phone OS at the root slash super user slash hypervisor slash administrator level. Again. So that's pretty much the same thing. No. I, I don't think that yes. users... Well, not unless... you know what, toolbars. Uh, Yay, do you really want toolbars. to be pseudoing your phone? Uh, you know, all right, look. When I had when I had my my Sony Ericsson W eight hundred, it had one cool thing that Symbian had that Mac OS ten doesn't have. It, it had, had a- the ability to run things mm-hmm. on a schedule. And you, did your audio crap out? I don't know. Oh no, it didn't. Okay. So for example, the way that I had it set up is that at eight o'clock. It would change all the settings on my phone, or it's, well, the settings that I set. So, for example, the ringtone. It would change the ringtone to vibrate only. It would change a whole bunch of different things so that while I was oh. at work sitting on my desk, I didn't have to meddle with that. And then at 4.15, by the time I was out of work, it would switch everything back over. That is pretty cool. And I don't even think I know of, and please write in and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't even know of a jailbroken Cydia app. That would do that. No, but and Symbian had that. If there was, I would actually. You would go back and do that. <laughs> that but, I could totally use that. But that was cool. I loved it on Symbian. On my on my that's Sony something Ericsson. That just adds, you know, a certain level of functionality that you wouldn't even think you needed, but mm-hmm. immediately you're like, of course. Yeah. That's. Hello, that totally makes sense. Yeah, and and so I'm I'm I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this in a minute. Um, three, the option to install a different OS altogether on a phone. Yes, no. I want to put Windows XP on my phone because Windows <laughs> XP is the most stable OS that has ever lived. Uh, fourth one is hardware warranties that are clearly independent of software warranties. That I agree with. But let me let me go back to these three points. The reason why for a phone, I'm specifically talking about a phone. Are we talking about phones? Yes. <laughs> is that um, I just want this thing to work when I need it to work. When like with with an operating system on a desktop computer, or no, you know what? Let me let me back up a second. If you know what you're doing on a mm-hmm. phone, if you're one of those people that want to root your phone or something, that's yeah. fine. So long as you had the ability. To put the phone in a state, in an emergency. If you're able to do that, then I agree with the EFF. But if you can't do that, if you're going to screw up your phone and not realize, like, you know as well as I do, there are people out there that install a whole bunch of arbitrary crap. Well, who knows if one of those arbitrary things is going to just wind up, like, destroying your route. You blow out your kernel and your phone's got nothing to run off of. And is it Apple's responsibility to put a backup operating system on the phone? No. But in a way, by making this walled garden, they're making it their responsibility. They're by taking all of that out of the user's hands, you know, they're they're kind of taking responsibility for that. They're saying mm-hmm. like, obviously there's a chance that you're gonna screw all this shit up, so we're not gonna sure. let you. Sure. Everybody has the ability to screw this whole thing up. Anybody that roots their phone has that ability. Yeah. We're and, one giant enterprise and Apple is our IT. Mm-hmm. No, in a sense, you're probably right. Mm-hmm. I just don't agree with the fact that um, the the EFF, and, and I respect the EFF, but I think in this case, they're completely wrong. No, I, yeah, this, I mean, like, I agree to a certain point, like, I'm pro jailbreaking if you know what you're doing and you're sure and you know like you know the risks and you know how to do it and you know what you're doing and you know how to fix it mm-hmm. go ahead you know mess with it <laughs> put whatever you want on it but to like mandate it um i heard today that the eu actually mandates that all cell phones have a uh, mini usb no why? Because I don't know. Like, I guess they just want like one port or some sort of, you know, 
the reason why I say no, and, and I'll go to I'll go back to the thirty pin design of of Apple for a second, is that what if you want to break out of what USB is capable of? No, yeah, and, exactly. By forcing this one inferior uh, port, then you know you're kind of. I mean, I guess great, you're pro open source, and this kind of goes back to the whole argument by. You know, we want freedom so bad that we're going to force it on you. Mm-hmm. That becomes like a whole nother kind of dictatorship almost. There's a, a comment under the article. Um, this is on Cult of Mac. Uh, the author of the comment, Low Tolerance, wrote, if the app store is a prison, then city is a junkyard. Yeah, pretty much. That's not a bad analogy. I mean, city uh, really isn't like the paradise that you escape to. Mm-hmm. It's... A lower quality app store that has all the things that Apple doesn't allow. So mm-hmm. it's really like this junky ghetto side stage, you know, way far away from the main stage that might have some cool treasures and might have like, you know, one cool band out of 10 mm-hmm. that aren't big enough to get on the main stage. <laughs> but I mean, overall like it's not like that is going to take over the app store like that's not i don't prefer that to the experience on the app Mm -hmm. store the layout finding stuff the way things are categorized and named and the 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 kind of standards that are put like app developers they don't have to put screenshots up they don't have to you know, name stuff, relevant, useful names. They don't have to put in descriptions. It's just really free form. So developers can put up whatever they want, however they want. Mm -hmm. And so if you're searching for something or you actually see something you like and you're like, I wish I knew what this looked like or I wish I knew more about what it did or I'm not, it sounds like it want, it, it's what I want, but I'm not sure I don't want to pay, but I don't want to <laughs> download either because... You know, it's a little bit more of a hassle to download and uninstall stuff from the Cydia store than it is from the App Store. Right. You have to literally, like, go through an uninstaller. You can't just kind of hold down and delete. Bottom line is that the way that Apple is running things right now really isn't causing any problems for anybody. No. How many people have had problems with the, the walled garden right now? Really? When I was running my N95... It had its own issues, but I didn't mm-hmm. say, gee whiz, gosh, willikers, I wish I could do blah, blah, blah. And, and You know, I've never said that. Yeah, so. I know. Me okay. neither. Now this is the first. <laughs> I, I just, I think that the EFF um, is just completely wrong about that. And, and, and like I yes. said, because phones are, are a special breed of devices that should never, ever, in my opinion, They're special be snowflakes. screwed with. Yeah. Okay. Rapid fire. Rapid fire. All Things D posted a collection of Steve Jobs interviews from over the last few years. Uh, I really like this. Yes, I like All Things Steve Jobs. Mm hmm. And All Things D, I gotta say, they've been very respectful towards Apple. Well, I mean, I think that goes both ways. Apple's <laughs> been very kind to. Uh, all things D, and especially Walt Mossberg. Yeah. So, Walt Mossberg is the man. Yes, they yeah. they both like each other very much. Yeah. Um, you can also buy a thermostat in the Apple Store now. I want one of these so badly. They're expensive though, but I want one. It's like two fifty. Um, two ninety five. You. Oh, even more. Oh than no I no thought. I'm sorry no it's two fifty you're right you're right okay and you just have to replace your other thermostat <laughs> super swap out <laughs> easy peasy totally who doesn't know how to do that this is the but, nest one what oh, i'm sorry it looks so sweet it is it's got a digital display and it learns and you can communicate with it over ios on your yeah. ipad or your iphone i want this badly but it's 250 dollars, mm-hmm. and i'm just not sure i want to drop that much for a yeah uh, i think because i think thermostats are kind of like the other vcr uh clock sort of like nobody know well okay maybe some people know but i mean it's like one of those kind of ambiguous things where they're all different 
and you have to kind of like sit in front of it like okay what, what does this <laughs> what do? does this do how do i turn it up how do i turn it down how do i turn it off oh my god especially if you um, ever had to schedule one of those things yeah no forget it and and one thing now again i don't want to sound like i'm being lazy but there are times when i'm in the middle of something i'm working on something important i, I want to change the temperature in my room i could just go to my phone and go dip, 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 done and then not have to get up, go upstairs, change go upstairs, it. upstairs, yeah. I could just do it from here. And mm-hmm. is that worth $250? Maybe if you have a big house or something like that. I don't have a big house, um, but it's. It, there are times when I just don't like getting up from where I'm sitting. Not because I'm lazy. It's because I'm just glued right. to what I'm working on. because you're totally not lazy. No, I no. am not. So if you, too, are totally not lazy, you might like the Nest thermostat, now available (laughs) on the Apple Store. Um, Tim Cook uh, is saying that Apple is considering killing off Ping. What? This is crazy talk, because Ping is awesome, right? No. I totally don't use it every day, so (laughs) therefore it should... Continue to be. They don't need ping. Really, all you need to do is just subscribe to your friends and maybe Facebook or Twitter or something like that and then post your right. updates through that. They can just put Twitter or Facebook in that side pane sure. instead of ping. And then maybe, yeah. I, I don't know how you would watch only music purchases from from iTunes. I that. know, right? But aren't you just dying to know what I just freaking bought <laughs> off of iTunes? No. What was the last thing you bought off of iTunes? Did you oh buy anything off of iTunes? It's not lately. No? Um, I'm going to look your ass since, up. Since I got Spotify, I think. Like, it's been a year. Oh, I that's right. I, are you even I on this? Yeah. I'm on Ping. Yeah. Oh, okay. I guess oh, it wants to be one of the last uh, domains where we're, where, uh, we're not stalking each other. Um. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Oh, yeah, look at that. Follow. Okay, there I'm following you. Look, awesome. Look you. Now, hey, follow what's me back. Doing? Okay, so you com- oh, you commented on something. You liked this. Uh, what was the last time you bought something? I like, told you like, it's been a freaking century. There you go. Century. Purchased three songs December th- Oh, my God. December 3rd, 2010. Scott Pilgrim Anthem. <laughs> Threshold 8-bit. Okay, I, I got to give you props for an 8-bit. Oh, Very that, nice. that's a good... That one's a, a good song. All right. I have to find that on Spotify. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, All right. <laughs> Let me get so, back hey, to what's Rim doing? <laughs> what's Rim not doing? Their unsold inventory <laughs> of all the crap shit. that they can't sell is now up to a $1 billion value. Wow. $1 billion That's of stuff. Awesome. I got to give Rim props, though, for calling their tablet the playbook. Uh, that was a, a clever name. I, re- I actually like that name. Yeah, I, I liked it. But now there's a report Too that... Bad their playbook didn't have any game. Mm, very clever. <laughs> What's the... Um, oh, never mind. No, never mind. Um, so apparently then, <laughs> there's massive job cuts. So if you were looking for a um, rim job... Oh, uh, no, you went there. <laughs> I was wondering if you were actually going to go there. You know, you know that's got to be an internal joke at RIM. It has to be. Of course. It's, oh, my God. It's a very internal, personal joke <laughs> at RIM. Uh, a RIM exec resigns um, before the job cuts come. <laughs> so he's like the first out the door. Yeah, I don't awesome. know what's going well, on Well, at least, that. you know, he has the... Um... <laughs> what? Go, he, go ahead. No. No, you're not going to say it? The, the courtesy to be the first one out. <laughs> that doesn't really work. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Sotheby's is auctioning off an Apple One board. <gasps> Yay! I, I, I was as a collector myself. Sometimes I get a little surprised at how much something is worth. They say that this thing is going to get between one hundred and twenty thousand and one hundred and eighty thousand dollars. I just happen to have that laying around. <laughs> I just don't get where that kind of money comes from because the all right there are fifty of them. There's supposed to be fifty of them in the world. I understand that. Well, I understand. okay. There's even less um, 
than that that are working. That are this working. is one of the very few. I think there's like five or ten that are actually still working. Mm -hmm. So this is one of those that's still working. And also, I think the handwritten in pencil letter by Steve Jobs himself to Atari that is accompanying this board probably raises the stakes a little bit. Is that going with the board? I thought that was separate. Yeah. No, they're together. Oh, they're like a thing. okay. I they're read. Like I read that that was separate from the Apple board. Okay, well then that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, but mm, it's still a lot of money, and you can it's make Steve one. Steve Jobs, for his letter to Atari. <laughs> Does it say what's in? The, I couldn't find what was in the letter to Atari. Um, in a bunch shoot. of articles that I read, all it said was they were talking about it on Mac Break, and Leo was actually. Um, quoting some of the letter, so that it has to be somewhere, either on like iLounge or Nine to Five Mac or something. All right, I'll somewhere. find it. Um, while you're doing that, um, <laughs> we touched on this briefly before, but there's a, a rumor going around that Apple is going to unveil the new Apple TV OS at mm -hmm. WWDC, yep. which will uh, possibly run on the future HD TV that Apple is possibly maybe putting out at some point hey i think it's great and the the hd tv that we bought i believe it was 2007 or five or i don't know it was a long time ago um the screen is starting to show signs of of wear decay decay yeah i guess that's the right word for it i don't know exactly what it is but it's it's when the the screen just starts showing like these blotches so if a new one comes out, yeah, does it have varicose veins too? No, it does Ooh, not. Awesome, but that's a, that's a good sign. It would be great to buy a, a brand new HDTV with uh, some sort of Apple OS inside. It would. It would be like a fun little prize at the bottom of your cereal box. <laughs> and which iPhone carrier has the fastest network? Apparently, believe it or not, AT and T. Yeah, I know. In some places, AT and T has a faster. This is crazy. Speed. Yeah. Um, so there's an app called Carrier Compare that you can download and actually uh, kind of record and upload your uh, data and stats based on your carrier, your phone, and all of that. And this company has collected all of this. And based on their findings from this app from users um, in all the major cities, I think uh, L.A., Chicago, New York, D.C., Boston, um, AT&T was the fastest. Yeah. I'm surprised. Which, I thought that, that Verizon every, definitely would have been. Like, no, this is crazy. And, I mean, I don't know how fast Verizon is because I don't have a Verizon phone, but I can tell you right now that AT&T blows in L.A. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's horrible. Yeah. So this... This blows my mind. But should you want to fight back, uh, download this app and, um, you know, give them your data. All right. Let's get on to I Want That with our house music. Okay. So I saw this about 20 minutes before we started recording. Logitech has, or it says releases, but I think it's only available for pre-order right now. It's a wireless solar keyboard. That yes. works on the Mac and iOS devices over Bluetooth. I want this. I w I, at least I want to try this thing out. Um, Logitech has had uh, wireless solar keyboards out for a while. Mm -hmm. For over a year. I want to say a year and a half to two years now. But they're kind of the longer desktop uh, mm -hmm. um, keyboards. And um, they've had them out for Mac and PC, black and white, his and hers. Um, but this one is the first one for iOS, and it's the, the little guy, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's just a little keyboard, uh, kind of like Apple's wireless keyboard uh, form factor. Mm -hmm. And it looks slick, and it's solar. How, you know, who can complain with that? There is one. Okay, so I'm looking this up. I didn't realize that it was new. Uh, Logitech Wireless Solar Keyboard K750 for the Mac. It's a full-size keyboard. Oh, it is. Okay. Fifty nine ninety five. I may look into that. I'm going to minimize this window and Wait, I'll, I'll take a look. Wait, K seven fifty. So is that the the one they've had out for a while? Because this one says K seven sixty. Yeah. Um. Apparently, the seven fifty had been around for yeah. For a so while. that's the one they've had out for a while for the desktop, and then the seven sixty I think is the mm -hmm. little guy. It that's says now for iOS. It says on or Amazon. Are they all for iOS now? 
Oh, well, this one says for the Mac. It doesn't... Uh, I'll have to do some reading on this. I'm skimming it, but it says date first available on Amazon.com. Yeah, September 12, no, the, 2011. the full ones have always been for Mac and PC. Um, but and so then I think it's it's just this new one is a first for iOS. Yeah. Uh, let me just do a quick search for the K750 on iOS. Apparently, it does work according to this. <laughs> some stuff that I found. According to some stuff, my well, no, I, yeah, uh, I'm I'm Logitech Solar for, uh, to install iOS GM and no, that's not it. No, uh, well, maybe it doesn't. Hold on, some there's some places here they're saying that it does, and some places saying that it doesn't. I don't have time to do uh, while we're doing a live show to do any research on this, um, so I'll have to check later. Mike wants it, and he's not sure why. Yep. All right, <laughs> let's move on to apps because we're running a little late here. <laughs> And I see you actually crossed out that we're going to do our next thing. That's Casey's way of saying, Mike, shut up. All right. <laughs> All right the app I'm doing today is called iStat. What's it do? Well, iStat gives you a whole bunch of information for your phone, although you can. You said this I works. I love information. Yeah, I know you do. You said that this <laughs> works on, um, on they have a, a Mac OS. a Mac version on the Mac app store okay that i wasn't aware of but i've been using iStat on the phone for a long time it tells you how much data came in and out over which uh ports that came in 3g wireless it gives you a running total of your your space uh your ip address over wi-fi your ip address over your cell and then this is really cool it gives you a list of everything that's running all your processes like a unix system the thing is um, you can't really do anything with them. You can't kill them. You can't yeah. kill them. Well, I mean, why would you want to kill some of your, your system uh, processes? Uh, you really wouldn't want to, but it'll show you what's running. The, the thing is, is I haven't been able, in all the, the years I've been using this, it hasn't told me what may be using the most CPU, and that might not be available through the Does iOS it tell API. you what's using the most memory? No, uh, no. So, unfortunately so great. all i have right now is that my uptime is 21 days and my load is 1.18 just like a unix system <laughs> uh, but that's it i um i wish it did more as a matter of fact um page in page out that sort of thing but um it's entirely possible that because of the api you're not allowed to get that information i think um the one I'm actually, I'm pretty sure the the Mac version is way more detailed. Mm -hmm. um, does kill processes, tells you CPU and mem usage and all of that goodness. Oh, that's what I want. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go to the uh, App Store right now and take a look at it. Well, while you're doing that, I'll tell you about a nice little companion app for mm -hmm. it called RAM Optimizer. Uh, this is an app I found in the Mac App Store. Um, it sits in your menu bar, and all it does, literally, is uh, help you optimize your RAM usage. Mm -hmm. um, it gives you a little icon, like I said, in the menu bar, and then brings down a little, um, kind of a lot like uh, disc art gives you like a, a visual interpretation of how much ram is being used for what so it's got free is so much mm -hmm. active is so much wired inactive and used is so much and so then they have like colored you know squares of what is what and then there's a big button that says optimize now and that will clear out anything that's inactive um that it feels would be safe to kind of get out of the memory pool and free up to uh be used okay um, iStat, I couldn't find in the, on the App Store, the Mac App Store, but it's at iSlayer.com slash apps. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was in the App Store, so maybe it's not. Yeah. All right. We're running a little late here, so we want to thank everybody for watching and listening. And, and what happened last week? We, as a team, as a team. Um, <laughs> Mike and I, launched a new thing. <laughs> thing. It's a site, blog, destination, soon to be a podcast, soon Something. to be mothership. Um, it's called thenexicon.com. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of talk about all things 
geeky and nerdy, video games, movies, music, uh, technology, comic books, video games, um, video games. Um, <laughs> oh, you know and what video else? games. Well, you have to remember that um, we're also going to be talking about video games. You do <laughs> while you're and while you're talking about video games, you don't want to forget to talk about video games. <sighs> yeah, we um, we launched the site on May 25th because it was. Um, Star Wars's 35th anniversary, and I thought that would be a fitting day. It's mm-hmm. a little anorexic right now. It's intentional. We're we're adding stuff to it, and we're still working out the um, the details of the show that is going to be coming. And Casey is actually working on. I won't spoil it, but oh I'm, yeah, because it's really big. Oh, it! I'm impressed. She's working it's on be some a art. Small small addition to it, but it, she's working on some art for the show. <laughs> yes. Some special art which I won't talk about. But that's that's also in the in the process of getting done. So the nexicon.com is is our home. It's uh Facebook, the Nexicon, uh Google Plus the Nexicon, Twitter. Twitter the Nexicon. Yeah, everything. Everything the Nexicon. Yeah. The don't go to nexicon.com because somebody owns that and they're it's squatters. It's, it's it's squatters. It's not as pretty as the Nexicon. No, you don't it's want not. To there. No, it's not. All right. I want to thank everybody for watching and listening. Infinite Loop TV is our Twitter ID. I am at Starmite. Casey is Casey Queso, K E C E Y K E S O. Every week I do that faster. It's what he said. And <laughs> <laughs> the Infinite Loop Show dot com. Oh, you can send us email uh, to the Infinite yeah. Loop Show at gmail dot com. Send us emails. So until next time, we will talk to you later. Bye. Oh, you know what would be really, really cool? If I actually played the music at the end. Uh, You could add it in post. Yeah, no, I'm doing it now. Okay. Because we're just pro like that.